Chapter 29 They were around 100 or so yards back. From this vantage point, and with their keen eyesight, they could have spotted them from three times this distance. The Krakota had been stalking them for a little over two weeks now. They originally were only trailing the scent of one. The one that they had picked up off of the first one they tracked on this other world. He who reeked of the heart of Anamdi. But they later discovered after he fell that the sacred jewel was no longer in his possession. But what was, was the scent of another, and a new hunt began. So, over ocean and through forest and across desert, they tracked him here. And, to their surprise, they picked up a second scent, the one that smelled like home, the one picked up from the ever-so-tiny orb of energy that passed them in the void and exploded, sealing their exit point into this other world. It delayed the hunt and kept them from their objective, the tasks that their Marty had sent them on. Now, they are here and the two scents are together. If one would say that these beasts could be at all pleased, this would be the correct moment for them to be so. Because the presence of the two scents together made the Krakota growl, an ever so light growl, one could mistake as excited laughter. If their prior observations held true, the two they've been tracking would end this walk at the gathering spot just ahead of them, an open area utilized by the inhabitants here. The Krakota's reconnaissance was thorough, informative, and strategic. They knew from all that they gathered that when they struck, it had to be fast, hard, and tactical. They had to maintain a decisive advantage over their prey. So, they ascertained all potential obstacles as well as outside threats. The Krakota were able to identify one particular threat. They were what was clearly this region's guard, addressed as the police by the locals. These police would be the first to respond to all forms of turmoil and alarm in the area. So, to evaluate their response time as well as their number strength, the Krakota produced several disturbances to gauge their speed and ability. With all the intangibles recognized, the Krakota's engagement maneuver was established. The moment to strike was at hand. When Aferne Laquan reached Myring Park, she was only slightly less upset with him for withholding the warning the heart of Anamde had given him. She knew Laquan truly lacked the full understanding he has been gifted with, this great and sacred power, a power that those chosen to possess on her world had to dedicate a lifetime just for the understanding. Only after that was obtained could they even hope to master and thus use the broad dynamism which is the heart of Anamdi. Its power was unmeasurable, and now it is in the hands of one all too dismissive of its prodigious energy. Yes, Laquan has a heart of gold, and his intentions are admirable. And she must admit that since he has come to possess the heart of Anamdi, he has done many heroic deeds. But she needs, no, Moja needs, much more than a hero. And whenever she raised the subject of him returning to her world, Laquan seemed less than pliable. Aferne couldn't flat out blame him, nor could she fully excuse his reluctance. An entire planet was counting on her, or at least half a planet. So, with or without the Laquan Stono, she had to return to Moja with the heart of Inamdi. She was just going to have to figure out which. To be continued.